tuned into this morning show And Rhonda's here to let you know it matters Morning matters You'll face today with confidence She'll never leave you in suspense The answer's coming Morning matters Now come on Rhonda, we're all tuned in questioning what's the matter good morning and welcome to morning matters this morning we are broadcasting from hamburger ski and this morning we are at captain morgan's retreat in northern san pedro our guest this morning is dorothy hoylman yes. i think i might have gotten that correct perfect um she's going to be sharing a little bit of her story with us this morning and she will be helping us with some matters dorothy good morning how are you good morning Rhonda. i'm doing very well how could i not look I tell you, you are so blessed. Like, you are super yes. blessed. Dorothy, where are you from? We were from uh, Avondale, Pennsylvania, in southern Pennsylvania in the United States. You know, you make me smile, right? Um, you Obviously, I don't even have to ask this, but I'm sure you've been married for a while. Why? Because I say, Dorothy, where are you from? And you say, we, have, we are from. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we are. What's going What's I mean, how's life there? What do you do there is what I should, probably should ask you more. Well... <laughs> I am a retired stay-at-home mother. How about that? Excellent, <laughs> excellent. But do you ever retire from being a mother? But I don't need to stay home with them anymore. They're off doing their own thing now. What was it like raising three children? It was wonderful. It was my dream come true. I have uh, two uh, handsome boys and a lovely daughter. And uh, I was doing the very thing I had always dreamed of doing. So. Excellent. Uh, when I met you yesterday, you told me that you just came out of surgery, and I thought, hmm, impossible. You look good. You speak well. I mean, you know, I would never guess. Share a little bit about that story with us, please. Well, actually, I uh, am here this trip recovering from brain surgery. Wow. Uh, I know. Um, and uh, that, uh, that was coming uh, on the heels, that surgery came on the heels of a uh, four-year uh, struggle I was having with a lower cranial nerve and um, after medication became less and less effective uh, I had to make that decision and uh, it wasn't hard to make because I, I knew that I could not live with the symptoms which were an electric shock to my throat um, and uh, so that's why I'm here now recovering from Well first that let me say that surgery. you look good, you sound Thank well. You. I would never imagine that you were recovering from any surgery, much less brain surgery. Well, thank you. I would have to say that you're one of the fortunate ones. I mean, normally when somebody comes out of a surgery that massive, they have immediate side effect that the, mm -hmm. the average person can notice. Mm. I mean, you <laughs> you look good. <laughs> There's only one thank way to you. put it, you look good. What was it like making that decision? Well, Rhonda, um, this particular nerve that was giving me a hard time happened to be uh, the nerve that affects um, the side of your throat and your tongue and your inner ear. And the surgeon did uh, explain to me that there was a possibility that this surgery could affect my voice. And for me, um, that was significant because uh, the way I met my husband 29 years ago, was through music and I am a singer and that's one of the things that God has uh, allowed me to enjoy my whole life so uh, I had to accept the fact that that may be taken away and um, that was uh, something that I just had to accept and I was willing to accept because I had so long of a time of enjoying it but it would be a sad friend to say goodbye to <laughs> a good friend to say goodbye to, there, to it would be goodbye. a sad day yeah, yeah. Um, what was some of the discussions what were the discussions like in your home i mean i would imagine that while you were going through this your husband also is going through this yes. because you are somebody that he loves you guys love to sing together yeah. and share together and could you just kind of like take us through what that was like for both of you well my husband would have to explain what it was like for him but i believe that it was a very uh very painful and difficult process for him i know it was but he wanted to protect me so he did not discuss his feelings too much with me, but I knew. Um, and I, uh, for me, it was a yielding process uh, that God, I believe, brought me through. I, it was a time of really testing my faith. I, I thought I knew what I believed. I had always hoped if my faith was put to the test that I would come through well. And, uh, <laughs> but I, you don't know until you're tested. And uh, I, 
I said, Lord, if you take this from me, this ability to sing, I have to say thank you for the years I've had it and I give it back to you if that's the case. The other possibility, not probability, but possibility was that I would lose my ability to swallow. That I didn't give up as easily. <laughs> I asked God if he would please allow me to continue to swallow. But then I had to say, but if you take this away, I trust you with that as well. What has this done for your faith? I feel like I have had to ask myself if I would trust him regardless of what he might bring me through and, and I have answered yes, but I was not ultimately asked uh, to be put through that test because here I am today and um, I am swallowing on my own by his grace, um, at least for now, <laughs> and I uh, am able to sing still. So Excellent. he, he allowed me to, to keep that. both. <laughs> God so, is merciful. Yeah. Um, and I will spend a few minutes just speaking with you about the importance of, of faith in your life and mm. in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that, um, that a lot of times we're not faithful enough. We don't have enough faith. We don't mm. have enough hope. We don't believe strong enough. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that was always present or did this instance uh, kind of like raise it up? It has always been a part of my life. Uh, my mother taught me at a young age uh, the general uh, realities of who God is and um, who he is to us. Um, and I would say that where my faith is today has been a process. And I realize that I actually have to go to him for my faith, if that makes any sense. I have to ask him to help me to be faithful. And when I realize that, then my faith increases. It, none of it comes from me, not even my faith. It, my, my decision to trust him comes from me. But other than that, it all comes from him. How important is God in your life? I don't get a breath without his decision. How have you always been actively conscious of his presence? You know, so because there are a lot of us that say we believe in God, mm -hmm. um, but we're not aware, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. We only mm -hmm. go to God we don't go to him to praise, mm -hmm. we go to him to pray and ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was, I would say, a big part of my life. Um, having children is very humbling. And uh, I would say my faith deepened um, first when I got married and realized that um, I was married to an imperfect person and I'm imperfect. <laughs> so you put two imperfect people together and you have trouble and so we needed help. And uh, I would say that it has been our faith um, in him who has uh, brought us through all those imperfections to where we are today, almost 29 years later. I like how you put that. I absolutely love how you put that. How important is God in a marriage, in your opinion? Essential, in my opinion. Essential. I don't, I don't know. Roger and I both came from divorced um, homes, uh, single mothers, wonderful loving single mothers we're both gra grateful for but um, we both hope to have a marriage that lasted and we both uh, realized that it couldn't happen just on our own that we needed and you know help. yesterday I was talking to a lady and she's been married for 35 years mm -hmm. and she explained what she thought was the reason that her marriage was together for this mm -hmm. long what do you think is the core reason that your marriage lasted 29 years and is still going and going well at that well um, there's a saying that my husband and I use and we've tried to teach our children and that is that love is a choice um, you have days where you feel loving toward each other and there are days when you just really don't want to love that person you don't even like that person um, and on it's it's in those days and during those times that I have to ask God to help me to love the way that he wants me to love because I don't want to. And sometimes I even go like this and say, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're not good days. <laughs> they're not good days. But, but we have blast. those days. And you have to know that you're going to have those days. Yeah. You know, a lot of people's marriage are... These days I notice that marriages and or relationships don't last. They just mm -hmm. don't last. And maybe I think one of the reasons it doesn't last is because nobody believes in anything anymore. We just mm -hmm. want it now. I want a good time mm -hmm. now. I mm -hmm. want to go and do this now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think about um, the wider picture of, mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. who we are. Um, 
<clears throat> I'll, I'm, I'm asking you these things because I think there are other people out there that could learn a lesson from where you are. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said their relationship changed when they had children. Mm -hmm. And some people say it changed for the worse. Mm -hmm. What did children do to your relationship? My husband and I realized the moment our first son was born that we were blessed with something that was bigger than <laughs> we felt capable of handling on our own. Um, and we wanted to do it right. We did not want to mess this up. But we also recognized that that child belonged to God and not to us. So for that reason, even more, we didn't want to mess it up. So that pointed us straight to the source and we relied on him more da daily and minute by minute. You know, when that. I listen to you, I, 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 I smile. I smile because I, I see that you really believed in, mm. in you have faith in God. Mm. And I believe that it is that faith that keeps you and your family and everything together. I think if we, if more of us were to be as strong in our faith, we would be mm. less stressed and our mm. lives would be mm. a little bit better because we are not, a lot of us are relying on ourselves. I want to do it. I want to get it done. No, just want it and leave it and it will be okay. If you, I believe if you keep yourself on the same path, it will be okay. But if you're stressing yourself and you think you are the all, then you end up in a stressful position. Yeah. Dorothy, what's for you? What's, what's, what has this healing process been like for you the last month or so? Well, I can say that uh, it's been humbling uh, as I have had so many friends and um, acquaintances pour out love and meals and cards and, and well wishes and prayers that I, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I, I think I, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, it's just been very humbling. Do you have any side effects? Do you hurt? Do you ache? Do you itch? You look, I mean, you look perfect you look like nothing is wrong I'm tired <laughs> but uh, other than that uh, I I have to say that I feel great um, I would say quote my mother and saying I'm in pretty good shape for the shape I'm in <laughs> <clears throat> for somebody else out there that might be going through something similar or some mm -hmm. surgery or some big decision in their life what would you say to them I would say <clears throat> pray and I would say Ask God to help you to trust him for what's out of your hands, and uh, you will have peace. It's promised. Count on it. Dorothy, what was the procedure like? The procedure I had done was called a microvascular um, decompression. Um, I had a blood vessel that was jammed up against the uh, ninth nerve that feeds into the lower part of your brain and that blood vessel was just not going to move so it was causing these electric shocks uh, to that nerve uh, so what the doctor had to do was uh, drill a hole into the lower part of my skull to get to the brain and he had to go up next to that nerve in between the blood vessel and the nerve and put little tiny pads up there and that was the procedure and then they had to put a little metal disc uh, where the where they had to drill out into my skull and that's behind the left ear is where he went in wow so. amazing i mean that's some serious stuff you know like drew would say because drew is one of these guys that never go through the metal detector he is always allowing them to touch him up and he travels all the time mm -hmm. would that affect your travel now no actually <laughs> this trip was the first trip we had the chance to um test Tested. that <laughs> and uh, I, I came through and I even said hey did you pick up anything in my head and they said no we, it's just for out, outer metals that we that you get beeped <laughs> on that note we're going to take a break and be back with the high cost of fuel these days every fill up can be a curiously scary experience rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back <laughs> That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse.
Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. The Ramada Belize City Princess is the entertainment capital of Belize. We are the safest, most comfortable place to entertain the entire family. If you choose to try your luck at a little gaming, the casino is there for you. We also have entertainment for the children in our game room. Our theater is always showing the latest in movies. Come try our lunch buffet, where every day offers a different special. There is a pool, along with a fitness center, available for your convenience. When you think of class and comfort, think of the Ramada Belize City Princess. Come, let us treat you like royalty. We started Go Wireless in a small house in Corozal Town 13 years ago. We've learned a lot in 13 years, as you can imagine. We've had our ups and downs, like every business does. But Go Wireless, the Go Nation, has grown significantly, as you will see today. It's grown because we've been able to bring you, the Belizean consumer, today's electronics, today's technology, at the lowest prices in the market. We have become the largest source of personal electronics in Belize. Let me introduce you to the new Go Wireless Direct. To the Go Wireless Direct you will see for 2015 and beyond. Our new store, our new service department, our new product, and even our new and improved way of doing business. We are so confident in who we've become and in our product that we've extended our warranty reinvested in product development and manufacturing as well as in our retail sales department. We're even implementing a buyback program. For the first time in our industry's history, we will buy back every Go phone or tablet by offering you a credit towards the purchase of a new and improved Go product. Our goal is to have a Go device or accessory in every Belizean home in 2015. And thank you for your support, especially in 2015 and beyond. Sending and receiving money has never been easier and more convenient. Announcing the grand opening of the newest MoneyGram location. MoneyGram is now located inside the A&R building at miles one and a half on the Philip Goldson Highway in Belize City. MoneyGram's convenient location and opening hours make it easy for you to conduct all your money transactions. At MoneyGram, you can send and receive money both locally and internationally. We are open from 8 to 12, and 1 to 5 Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays from 8 to 12 and 1 to 2. With convenient parking, great security, and air-conditioned comfort, MoneyGram should be your place of choice to send and receive money. Visit us today at mile one and a half at the a &R building on the Philip Goldson Highway. Dream Valley Resort is private, elegant, and peaceful. It's a unique jungle resort located in the quaint village of Tea Kettle in the Cayo District, along the banks of the beautiful Belize River. Enjoy a leisurely stroll to all our facilities on our elevated walkway. All our suites are equipped with air conditioning, dish TV, Wi-Fi, kitchenette, private bathroom, indoor jacuzzi, 
and a patio overlooking the river. And if you can tear yourself away from the peaceful comfort of your suite, you can dine indoors or outdoors at our fine cuisine restaurant. Green Valley Resort offers many tour packages which include hiking, biking, horseback riding, as well as river tours. With such an ideal location close to the capital city, the resort offers fantastic facilities for conference meetings and event hosting. Dream Valley Resort, your intimate jungle retreat. Let's get ready to rumble! Get serious, get off. You're tuned into this morning show, and Rhonda's here to let you know it matters. Morning matters. You'll face today with confidence. She'll never leave you in suspense. The answer's coming. Morning matters. Come on, Rhonda, we're all tuned in to hear you reason with our questioning. What's the matter? Welcome back to Morning Matters right here from Dorothy's home. That's right. <laughs> this is not the yellow brick road, but Dorothy <laughs> is here. Dorothy, what we're going to do now is we're going to ask you to help us answer some other people's matters. Okay. All right. These are international matters. They're matters that most people have all over the world. And since you've been married for 29 years, I think you qualify. All right, ready for that? Think you could help me out with that? I will see. I certainly try. I think you can. You raised three children. You have a husband for twenty nine years. You went through surgery. You, you look good. You speak well. You have to be here for a reason. You have to be here for a reason. It says, "I have a situation. This girl lives with my boy's brother, and she had an affair with my man, which is her man's brother, and she doesn't want this young man." to know what do you think I should do you understand that somewhat I, I don't know if I completely understand that or not I'm just saying that um, if you're having an affair with someone's man if am I gathering that yes. right get out <laughs> that Absolutely. would be that would be my advice that's trouble for you and it's going to cause trouble and heartache for someone else and that's never going to be good for you Get Never. out. Get out, sweet girl. This one <laughs> says, Drew, I love your swag. I have a crush on you. Are you happily married? You read that before. They sent it again. <laughs> it was new. I promise. It was new. I, I, I don't reread the text, Drew. I would say get out. <laughs> <laughs> Hands off. <laughs> there you go. I have a boyfriend, but he does not want any of my friends to see us or does not want any of his friends to see us together. I don't know if it's because he's cheating. What do you think I should do? Oh, I would say be with someone who is proud and grateful to have you on his arm. Don't fall, don't sell yourself short. Exactly. I couldn't yeah. say it any better. <laughs> Good morning. I listen to you guys on the show. My husband and I married for 30 years mm -hmm. and have six children. Wow. And he so-called marry a woman in the Muslim church. It's not registered, so it's not real. I went through all sorts of problems with him. Now he has another woman. That is her stuff. Mm. That is her issue. It comes in Creole, so I have to translate it in English for you. Okay. She's married legally to a man in like regular marriage and then her mm -hmm. husband went and married somebody in the muslim faith so technically he he really just have one wife mm -hmm. but he has another woman based on his religious belief mm -hmm. i would say if you don't like it leave it mm -hmm. well i for me personally i would have to look at that as betrayal and um that he walked away from his marriage to me 
Yes. That's the way that I would look at that. I would agree with you because that is not the contract that you both agreed yes, on when you went right. and got married. I say six children or not, he needs to know that this is not what the contract is. And he has broken the contract. It's okay for you to walk away from a contract that he has broken. If he wants to sit down and renegotiate the terms, fine, fair enough. If he doesn't, then he has to go. Because we have to be good examples for our children. We have to teach them what is right and fair. And we have to show them good examples of good relationships. Yes. Yes, I agree. Perfect. You know, and this Beautiful this is not a good relationship. Right. I agree with you. This one says, good morning, Rhonda. I have a sister on my dad's side. She tells my older brother a lot of lies about my mom and I and tells him disrespectful things to my about my mom. And my brother believes her and treats us bad. This is not right. All she's doing is pushing him away from us. What can I do to let him realize that she is using him? It's sibling rivalry. Yeah. Uh, well, I was an only child. <laughs> when these things come up, I have to say thank you. Um, but again, you know, people, dealing with people, um, you'll always have people who want to stir up trouble. And um, when you come up against those people, then, you know, again, I rely on my faith to see how God wants me to respond. Um, sometimes it's for me to uh, get involved with and sometimes not. Sometimes you can't convince a person that uh, someone's uh, a troublemaker. They have to figure it out themselves. I, th yeah. I completely agree with you. I think that if your half-sister, step-sister is making bad, the only thing you can do is be constantly good mm -hmm. in your own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if your brother or your father or whoever doesn't see that, then you have to hope and pray that one day they will. Yes. For now, the more you push, the more resistance you will get. That is right. That so is just right. relax yourself. Do what it is that you do, and eventually everything, they said, what happened in the dark will come to light. Yes. And this is just one of those days that you just have to be good. Yeah. If you, what you are doing is good and fair and truthful, then it's okay. Yeah. The yeah. rest will happen. It will take care of itself. Yeah. You can't fight it. You can't she's, force it. She's responsible to be uh, the best her she can be. Exactly. And the other That's person's going to be who they're going to be. Yeah. I am six months pregnant for my boyfriend, but he, but she still live with his, I supposed to be, he still lives with his girlfriend and he only sleeps with me when they are fighting. He tells me that he loves me and I know I love him. What could I do? You're deceiving yourself. He does not love you. No. That's the bottom line. And I'm so sorry. I wish I could hold you in my arms because uh, we've all probably been deceived or deceived ourselves um, at some point in our lives, and that's very heartbreaking, but it's the truth. It is the hard, cruel reality, but I'll tell you one thing that you have to, we as human beings have to pay attention to. We have to pay attention to the, to the, to the person. When somebody presents themselves, generally they present themselves in their truest form. Mm -hmm. So the fact of the matter is if he's with you or not with you, he's a cheater. He's a cheater, he's a liar, he's a, he, he's a manipulator, yeah. and you allow that. And you allow that probably because you question your own worth. And I know that probably you don't want to hear that, but this, is, this is, mm -hmm. could be your reality. You have to start valuing yourself differently. You have to put your work, you have to have better self-talk is what I would say. Mm -hmm. You have to put your work on a different level. Um, you're pregnant with this child, fine, fair enough, that is done, you can't undo that. Um, the next three or whatever months before the child comes, say you have to strengthen up your own self, strengthen up your own magnet, find some time for yourself and realize that this is something that you probably will have to do on your own for the most part for the rest of your time. Because him coming in your life is at this point, if he still has another girl and he only comes when it's convenient for him, is not helpful for you. Mm -hmm. It's not beneficial for you. He can live up to his responsibility as being a father to this child, but he's not a boyfriend to you. Yeah, and I would, I would say, too, that um, if you don't value yourself, um, it may not be your fault. Maybe sure. life has told you that you are not valuable, but that is not true. That does not make how you feel true. The truth is you are valuable because you were created by a God who values you. But, you know, Dorothy, and I'll, I'll have to ask you, but... How can somebody believe that, that has been told, maybe verbally or otherwise, for their whole life that they're 
they're nothing maybe by the way people treat them or people saying this to them or you know if you have been told your whole life that you are nothing mm -hmm. and you are less mm -hmm. and you are worthless how can you what are some of the steps that you would recommend somebody take to start seeing their value the first step I would recommend is I would pray I would pray to the one and only true God to help me to understand who I am in his eyes and he will answer that prayer and I will be praying for you too Excellent. How can you tell if somebody's in love with you? Well, by the way that they act, not what they say. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very true. That I can't add anything to. Good morning. I'm in a five-year relationship. I have two children for this man, and we are not married. He says, yes, he just needs to have a little money for us to get married. Do you think I should wait? I think this is a, a common uh, thread that is happening um, even in the United States where people um, hold off on marriage um, because they want to have money for the big celebration uh, and yet they'll have children together and they, they uh, live as husband and wife but they don't want to go through the ceremony until they have the money and uh, I encourage people to make that covenant between you and God with each other make that covenant and it, however you can afford for it to look like and then if you want to have a big party years later then do that but for now make that covenant don't use that as an excuse I and maybe we all value it differently but I really don't think the party is necessary the party is just like it's like having a birthday party you becoming 16 does not change if you have a party with 30 people or 300 or no party you will still be 16 mm -hmm. so if you really want to get married then go get married I mean it's really just about you and him. Yeah. That's it. But it still requires a decision, like like you said. Yeah. Make that decision. Make the decision. If you turn six, you're going to turn sixteen. Yeah. Um, or not, but you won't be married unless you make that decision. You have to make the and decision. And the thing that I have to say to, especially women, right? If you want to be married, don't start living with a man. Yeah. Yeah. Because the minute you start living with him, he gets wife treatment and you are don't <laughs> yeah, get like wife that. benefit i like that you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. you are giving him your cooking your cleaning your washing your your, your being, love your yeah. loving mm -hmm. enough up, you're sweeting up on him he don't have to marry you now yeah he get everything already he got the prize yeah sure keep yeah. the prize <laughs> prize is yours they say um there was an old saying in the united states um why um why give the uh, man the cow when he already has the milk or exactly. something like that? He shouldn't know. have to pay for it. He's not going to pay for the cow when he can just come and there milk you it go. for that's, free. There you go. That's what it you is. You know, yeah. don't let yeah, him yeah. just milk the cow for free. He has to take care. <laughs> he has to feed the cow and nurture the cow and, and everything. Yeah. Of course, I don't want to be referred to as a cow, so I don't know if I as like that. As a matter that. of speaking, you know, but it's true. Right, right. I always say, how I say it is, don't give him the prize before he run the race. I like that. As soon there as he you show go. up, you give him the prize. No, 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 he has to run the race. There you go. That's, that's better. I like that. <laughs> I'm going out with this man for five years. We live together for a year now. Anytime I leave the house, he's upset. Mm. You've been living with him for five years, and whenever you leave the house, he's upset. I think something is wrong with the way you communicate. Maybe there's something that is happening that he's not comfortable with, but he doesn't know how to communicate that to you. So he goes on and assume and accuse you of stuff, and so fights start or arguments mm. start. I think you need to sit down with him and say, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. What is the matter? Yeah, um, it could be a lack of communication. Uh, certainly, I think that is an aspect of it. Um, it. Sounds like there's some insecurity going on there, whether it's justified or not. Um, and then there could be some co controlling issues there, too. And so I think you need to pay attention. But after yeah. five years, I would imagine that you guys should have a good understanding of who each other is and what the relationship mm -hmm. is. And if this just started to happen, then what has changed? What brought it about? Is it that he's projecting on you or is it something that you are doing? I always say, start with me. Yeah. What am I doing that could cause this? Mm -hmm. And if you are not doing anything and you have not changed, then what is he doing that makes him feel that when I go yeah. out, I'm not acting right? Right. Yeah. I have a sister that drinks Red Top a lot. Red Top is strong rum, just so you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> and soon as she gets drunk, she gets very disrespectful with everybody. 
mm-hmm. even with her children and grandchildren. Sometimes she takes off her clothes and exposes her private parts, which is very disgusting. What advice would you have for her? Mm. Well, I, I would imagine you've brought it up with her. Um, and, uh, you know, other than, you know, helping her to, to see the obvious, uh, I don't know what you do because you can't make someone change their behavior. Um, I would certainly try to protect the children from it, but I don't know what you would do. Um, I would say there's very little that you can do other than speak with her, but maybe you want to. A lot of times we go and we tell people things. Mm-hmm. Go when she's sober and ask her some questions. Certainly. Certainly. You know, you ask her some questions that would make her answer, that she will give her own self the answer to like, like maybe why do you drink? Mm-hmm. You know, why do you feel the need to go and get drunk? And those will, would be things that she would say, maybe I don't have to drink anymore. As opposed to say, you need counseling. You should go and get yourself some AAA treatment. Sure. Well, and, and I always like to start with the positive, And I would certainly start with the things that you love about her. There you go. And how that changes when she's drinking. See, you are perfect. You are mm. like the perfect mother, person, <laughs> caregiver. You're so kind about delivering of these messages. I could learn something I from that. I had a lot of love <laughs> in my life. He had a <laughs> One more matter before we take a break. I have my man and he slept with my brother's wife and I found out and left him. Mm-hmm. But he wants to make up back. Do you think I should because I have difficulty trusting him? Oh boy. <laughs> That's uh, sort of the ultimate betrayal. Um, but certainly I do be- believe in forgiveness and I think that's just a question you're gonna have to ask yourself. Certainly again, I would rely on God, um, but I believe it's possible. You just need to ask yourself the question, could I? It would be a process. It's not something that could happen right away. Well, while I have faith in God and I believe in God, like you say, for me that is right up there with one of the most disgusting things that your partner can do to you. Um, but there would be so many questions that I would have to ask myself before I decide. Like, why would I want to? That would be my first mm-hmm. thing. Why would I want to run the risk of putting myself through this again? What is the yes. benefit of me doing that? Mm-hmm. You have been betrayed by, by a, more than just your husband. You've been betrayed by your sister-in-law. You've been mm-hmm. betrayed by her, by him. It makes you question mm-hmm. your position in your family. So you have to sit down and spend a lot of time, I would say, with yourself. And figure out, is this the kind of surroundings that I want to be in? Because you will have mm-hmm. to see your sister-in-law all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. She's not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. You will have to see the same man that you're forgiving all the time. And then, in, I believe, in the back of your mind, you're going to be in. I wonder, can you live with that? Exactly. That's why I say, I think you have to ask yourself. And those are all things that, that I think that she should consider. Exactly what you said. Exactly. Um, but I actually have known people who have been through that and have been able to go through that forgiveness process and come out with a stronger marriage. I will say, I think that as a couple, you would probably have to break off ties with the sister-in-law and some other family members. So there's your choices too. Involved. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, we're gonna take a break. And I'll tell you what, in the third and final segment, we will hear Dorothy and her husband sing because she can sing. Yeah. Dream Valley Resort is private, elegant, and peaceful. It's a unique jungle resort located in the quaint village of Teakettle in the Cayo District, along the banks of the beautiful Belize River. Enjoy a leisurely stroll to all our facilities on our elevated walkway. All our suites are equipped with air conditioning, dish TV, Wi-Fi, kitchenette, private bathroom, indoor jacuzzi, and a patio overlooking the river. And if you can tear yourself away from the peaceful comfort of your suite, you can dine indoors or outdoors at our fine cuisine restaurant. Dream Valley Resort offers many tour packages which include hiking, biking, horseback riding, as well as river tours. With such an ideal location close to the capital city, the resort offers fantastic facilities for conference meetings and event hosting. Dream Valley Resort, your intimate jungle retreat.
The Ramada Belize City Princess is the entertainment capital of Belize. We are the safest, most comfortable place to entertain the entire family. If you choose to try your luck at a little gaming, the casino is there for you. We also have entertainment for the children in our game room. Our theater is always showing the latest in movies. Come try our lunch buffet, where every day offers a different special. There is a pool, along with a fitness center, available for your convenience. When you think of class and comfort, think of the Ramada Belize City Princess. Come, let us treat you like royalty. Let's get ready to rumble! Get serious. Get bop. Sending and receiving money has never been easier and more convenient. Announcing the grand opening of the newest MoneyGram location. MoneyGram is now located inside the A&R building at miles one and a half on the Philip Goldson Highway in Belize City. MoneyGram's convenient location and opening hours make it easy for you to conduct all your money transactions. At MoneyGram, you can send and receive money both locally and internationally. We are open from 8 to 12 and 1 to 5 Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays from 8 to 12 and 1 to 2. With convenient parking, great security, and air-conditioned comfort, MoneyGram should be your place of choice to send and receive money. Visit us today at mile one and a half at the A&R building on the Philip Goldson Highway. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. Aeropost is now making shopping easier and much more convenient. You can now shop from the comfort of your own home and have your goods delivered to you with no additional cost in as little as seven working days. No credit card, no problem. Come on down to our office at number one Map Street in Belize City and we will assist you with your shopping. No order too small or large for us to ship. Be it cell phone, TV, jewelry, shoes or clothing, we have exactly what you're looking for. At Aeropost, your favorite shopping spot is only one click away. Aeropost, you shop, we ship, we deliver. Give us a call at 223-4349 or visit us at number one Map Street in Belize City. We started Go Wireless in a small house in Corazal Town 13 years ago. We've learned a lot in 13 years, as you can imagine. We've had our ups and downs, like every business does. But Go Wireless, the Go Nation, has grown significantly, as you will see today. It's grown because we've been able to bring you, the Belizean consumer, today's electronics, today's technology, at the lowest prices in the market. We have become the largest source of personal electronics in Belize. Let me introduce you to the new Go Wireless Direct. To the Go Wireless Direct you will see for 2015 and beyond. Our new store, our new service department, our new product, and even our new and improved way of doing business. We are so confident in who we've become and in our product that we've extended our warranty, reinvested in product development and manufacturing, as well as in our retail sales department. We're even implementing a buyback program. For the first time in our industry's history, we will buy back every Go phone or tablet by offering you a credit towards the purchase of a new and improved Go product. Our goal is to have a Go device or accessory in every Belizean home in 2015. And thank you for your support, especially in 2015 and beyond. You're tuned into this morning show And Rhonda's here to let you know it matters Morning matters You'll face the 
today with confidence She'll never leave you in suspense The answer's coming, morning matters Now come on round, the we're all tuned in To hear you reason with our questioning What's the matter? Welcome back to the third and final segment of Morning Matters. We've moved inside. You know why we've moved inside? Because Raja has joined us. And Raja and Dorothy, at the end of this segment, will sing for us. Raja, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Raja, tell me a little bit about Raja. Wow. That's a, how much time do you have? <laughs> um, so I guess, uh, I don't know. Right now, I'm a CIO of a pharmaceutical company. And uh, that's kind of what I do for a living. Uh, but I, I actually started uh, in business being a musician. Uh, ran a recording studio, an advertising agency, a whole bunch of different kinds of things. Um, always kind of had a technical bent, um, but also a real creative side, so it's always trying to kind of merge those things. Um, I was running a recording studio at the time when I met my lovely wife, Dorothy. Um, she came in with a band to record a, a demo to get gigs, and um, and I didn't, I never let her leave the studio. so. Uh, <laughs> That was, uh, that was how we met and uh, I've weaseled my way into her band and um, so that we could mm -hmm. spend more time together and then uh, we got married a couple years later and um, I guess a couple more years later had some uh, started having children and we've been married uh, coming up on 29 years now. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, earlier Dorothy was speaking about her surgery. How did that affect you as their husband? Well, um, <clears throat> I mean I, I, would, I would say that probably it was, it was uh, it was scary for me because a lot of what I'm able to do in life as far as um, my career and providing for my family is, is really uh, heavily supported by what she does for me. Um, so, uh, you know, the keeping the home and taking care of things that I know that I don't have to worry about that and I can really focus on, on what I'm doing uh, and not worrying about my children. Uh, uh, you know, was was a really big benefit for me to be able to do what I did uh, at a high level. So the thought of, uh, especially with our, our children now, we're kind of right on the edge of being at empty nesters. I mean, all of our kids are in college. They're, one of them's married. Another one has his own job and is often kind of off the payroll. And uh, so we have one left in school. And we're really looking forward to this moment where we can kind of be a couple again and just, you know, not that you're ever done being parents, but you'll, you'll be able to, to kind of experience life in a different way again. And, and uh, the thought of, of, of her having to go through something that was going to be painful was, was difficult for me. Uh, and, and then the thought of her not being the same afterwards um, was difficult for me. Um, so I had a, a, quite a lot of anxiety uh, about that. And I did I'm one of those over analyzers, so I did a lot of research, and I, you know, I, I knew a lot about this surgery, and I saw like I watched them being done online, and I checked out all these different doctors, and I was he didn't tell you, but I was actually the one who diagnosed her condition. So. <laughs> True. <clears throat> Seriously? So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other doctors couldn't figure out what it was, and I, I basically, you know. I guess I know how to use a computer better than doctors do. But <laughs> the bottom line is uh, I was able to figure out kind of what that was and match her symptoms to the condition. And then we brought that to the doctors and they said, hmm, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it? Yeah. So, but. Yeah. What is life like now? Uh, we're incredibly thankful, very mm -hmm. grateful. Um, mm -hmm. the, the amount of emotion that, that uh, we've been through through this has been um, overwhelming and then the support of the folks around us that are friends and family and um, and even people who barely know us who just really reached out and loved us through that um, has been amazing and then her uh, recovery from this um, has also been ahead of the curve and, and really amazing and, and given us an opportunity um, to come and recover in this wonderful place because when she got cleared to travel it didn't take me very long to book the flights and get down there. <laughs> so. What has this lesson taught you? What was the best, I should say, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned from this? Wow, we have a big God. Really, really big. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Very, um, it's very hard for me to think of life without her. 
And I thought a lot about that. Um, so to know that, that we can still do the things that we do together and enjoy life together and continue our midlife crisis together. Mm -hmm. oh, our, what our midlife crisis is mm -hmm. just being able to, to sing together and, and, and play music and, and travel and, and uh, enjoy people and, and you know, serve God and wherever we are. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really kind of what we're looking forward to in this last third of our lives is just being able to be who mm -hmm. He made us to be and, and, and you know, use our gifts that he's given uh, so that we can, you know, bring joy to other people. I mean, that's what we want to do. Well, you know, it would not be right for me to let you start singing without asking you a few matters. I'm sure that you heard me asking Dorothy some earlier. So it's your turn between you and Dorothy. Now I have both of you to help me answer some matters. I have a few matters that I have to answer. Um, but before we do, I need to say good morning to the people in Chicago. Looking at Morning Matters this morning, the Belizean Americans there, especially. Um, thank you for making Morning Matters a part of your morning. The reason I said that is because I got a text from somebody in Chicago say, I look at you every day. Well, thank you for choosing Morning Matters. My boyfriend and I have been dating one year now, and we live together. His family tried everything to keep us apart. No, they don't like me because he doesn't visit them. Because I told him, if every time he goes over there, he comes back and we argue. It's best he goes back home if it's over there he wants to go. Now he's stuck going over there and they feel like I am the reason why he's not going there. I know it's his mother and I hate feeling like I am the reason why they're not over, why he's not going over there. Am I wrong? Do you have any easy questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, relationships are hard uh, and especially relationships with uh, when you start blending uh, you know, you're, you're, you, and this is a boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes. Right? So, uh, you know, you start involving the families. I mean, maybe, maybe the, the arguments that they're having or the things that they're not actually, uh, getting along with, uh, have to do with the fact that they're not committing to each other or they're not, uh, you know, who knows what, it really didn't tell us why they, they weren't, uh, they were arguing after the fact. Uh, but I, I would say, um, you know, that, that, First, make sure that the relationship between the two of you are, is right before you try to complicate it by adding in the in-laws and this family and that family because nothing's going to work if it's not right between the two of you. And so if you, if you can make sure that that's, uh, that's solid before you start involving other people, other people will see that and they'll be more likely to be on board with what you're about than, uh, than if you were... Uh, you know, they can obviously see that there's problems between the two of you or something. Strengthen your own magnet and the rest will come. Dorothy? Uh, <laughs> I would say, I would say yes. And I would always say, you know, you don't, you don't want to be the, the thing that divides your husband or your, your future husband uh, and his family. Uh, I would do what I could to encourage the love there. Um, always encourage love. This one says, good morning, Rhonda. I'm with my girl for one year and three months, and we both love each other, but all she wants to do is let her friends lead her astray. They take her drinking all the time. What am I to do? Hmm. Well, and it, you've been with this girl for a year and three months, um, and I think you should probably know a little bit about her character at this point. Um, and I think that, you know, it's not unusual or un, uh, unfair to, to want, uh, you know, a certain type of behavior out of somebody that you want, you're going to be with. Um, if it's not her girlfriend's leading her astray, um, she's making that choice. So no, nobody can really make you do something you don't want to do. So, uh, I, I think I would challenge her to say, look, you know, you can't blame your girlfriends for these things that you do that you know I don't like. So if you're doing something that you know I don't like, you're choosing to do that. And if you're choosing to do that, you're choosing not to love me in the way that I want to be loved. And so if that's, uh, if that's how it's going to be and that you're going to choose your girlfriends and partying over um, what you know I care about, then that's not something I really am willing to accept in a relationship. I, I would probably say it's, it's time to have a good conversation with her about that. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, on that note, we're going to uh, go straight into a little singing from Dorothy and... 
Roger. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a Sam and Ruby song. So if you mm -hmm. want to look it up and see how it's done right, you can check <laughs> that out. Uh, but this is our version of this, and it's called "Ain't Love Something." hands this is for the ones with broken hearts what I'm trying to explain is in our lives there'll come a day when we find those feelings lost in the dark it's the falling the flying the losing the trying it's that crazy little thing that we call love and when it comes to you if I had to tell the truth about those mixed up thoughts my mind's been thinking of. It's like the sunshine, it's like the rain. You bring me pleasure and you bring me pain. I've been over my head, I got you under my skin. Ain't love something? Cheers. My little buttercup, your eyes are filled with reasons not to stay. Let me say this once again, not as a poet, as your friend. The things you're thinking right now, I think every day. It's like the sunshine, it's like the rain. You bring me pleasure and you bring me pain. I've been over my head, I got you under my skin. Ain't love something It's like the sunshine It's like the rain You bring me pleasure And you sure bring me pain I've been over my head I got you under my skin Ain't love something I've been over my head I got you under my skin Ain't love something 